Hi, my name is Mirko Corselli, and today we'll be reviewing some fundamental principles for the choice of appropriate flow cytometry controls. Did you know that more than one set of controls may be required to accurately interpret multicolor flow cytometry data? While separation between a positive and negative population may be obvious for clearly separated markers like CD4, setting gates for dimly positive cells may be challenging. In this video, we will review the most appropriate controls required to take into account different sources of background and to correctly set gates. Single stain controls. When performing multicolor flow cytometry, compensation is critical to correct the spillover signal from one fluorochrome into another detector. This plot shows an uncompensated sample stained with CD4 APCR700 only. Spillover from APCR700 into the BUV737 detector may lead to misinterpretation of this data as a double positive population. Running single stain controls such as cells individually stained with all the antibodies in the panel is required to calculate compensation and subtract no specific signal. Be aware though that use of improper controls may lead to over or under compensation and subsequent inaccurate data interpretation. Fluorescence minus one controls. While compensation corrects for non-specific signal into a secondary detector, it does not eliminate the background spread resulting from spillover. For this reason, an unstained control is not sufficient when performing multicolor flow cytometry, as this does not take into account the background spread introduced by other fluorochromes present in the panel. In this example, we show the importance of fluorescence minus one controls, defined as a cocktail containing all the antibodies in the panel minus the one for which an appropriate gate needs to be determined. First, the unstained cell control was used to set the gates. The next plot showed the cell stain with the full panel. According to the gates set based on the unstained control, 25% of CD3 positive cells are also positive for PD1. However, the use of FMO control containing all the antibodies except PD1 reveals additional background introduced by other fluorochromes. This accounts for 12% of cells that were wrongly considered positive in the previous plot. When we adjust the gates based on the FMO control, we are able to more accurately measure truly positive, CD3 positive, PD1 positive cells at 13%. Biological controls. There is also background that is introduced by the antibody of interest at the noise in the form of non-specific binding. This will not be taken into account using FMO controls, which by definition lack the antibody in question. Isotype controls can be used to mimic the non-specific binding of antibodies of a specific isotype. However, the background of the isotype control is not an exact match of the background of all reagents of that isotype. For this reason, biological controls are a better control for background since they are stained with the same exact reagent as the test sample. Negative biological controls can exclude non-specific antibody binding, as shown in this example where unstimulated T-cells were used as a negative control for cytokine expression. Equally important are positive biological controls, such as the use of a potent mitogen to stimulate the cells and confirm assay performance. When combined, these controls provide confidence on either negative or rare dimly positive results. In conclusion, the choice of the most appropriate controls may vary depending on the specific experimental condition, and therefore it is advisable to run several types of controls during assay development to determine the main source of background and the best strategy to account for it in a given experiment. For information about the products or concepts featured in this video, please visit bdbiosciences.com.